everyone. Welcome to the part four of the peer-to-peer -peer file sharing system video. From from based on the previous video, we will just get straight into the project. We come back to the uh, logics folder. We go to the the services. We we add um a class. Uh, we call it the ping service. Uh, it's a it's a it's a public class, and we let it implement the iPing service. So we extract the method. So for now, we well, we just we just gonna test it on the, the console application. So we just say so you know. We're not gonna sell a lot. So by for now, this is what we're gonna do. So we we on the same folder. What we do is we add a new class. We call it um, peer peer configuration service. For now, we just move it to the, the correct folder and the correct file. So we call it. Um, we will implement the I peer configuration service that we actually did earlier on. So for now, this is what we get once we extract the values. So what we do is we just gonna code a little bit of the methods and all that. So first of all we just add the region So we add a port, private, and we got I communication object communic communi <laughs> communication sorry man then if we have plus five pre channel I ping actually then last <coughs> got a boolean is service start so we For our constructor, our constructor will take a peer to implement the IPing service. So we have our peer here. So now our port, what we're going to do is just create a simple method to find a free port. So the method we call it find free port. So 
So what we do is just <coughs> we're just gonna write a simple code here to 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 find a free port. So what we do is <coughs> initiate an integer port IP endpoint endpoint is equal to new IP endpoint IP address dot any so <coughs> using we use a socket Yeah, it's in system dot socket. So if you're familiar with socket, then you understand what I'm doing now. And what we're doing is just finding a free So if we so protocol type dot IP so we come in here. <coughs> What we do is um, the socket. We bind it to our endpoint. Then IP endpoint our local is equal to do -do. we cast it to IP endpoint. There we go. Take our socket, the local endpoint, then our port will be equal to our local endpoint the port. So we come out of it and then we just check if we have a new port number. If the port is still zero, then we throw an argument. Otherwise, we return our port. So this just it. That's just how to get find out a free port. So now we come into working on starting our service. So first, we will, we will, we will <coughs> this the, this is just the main framework of our service. We will come back and write more code. So what we do is. We just we disable So here we have we get put our binding. We're going to use a net peer TCP binding. And the security mode is None. We're not at the moment. We're not using any security.
So, for now we've got um. Okay, so we we just return something just to remove the error. So for now, we're just gonna start writing our service. So we have um, an endpoint. That is uh, our service. If you're familiar with WCF. And you want you 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 understand what I'm what I'm doing here. So so we get our contract description as of the what type of I think service. Then our binding. Then. Uh, endpoint uh, end IP address. And point address. New endpoint address. And we put in a net. <laughs> P2P our net dot P2P column forward slash our service which is going to be YouTube file share so come to the next stage we have we call our we have peer dot host our peer host. So we initiate our service, our ping service, and our peer channel will be our peer. Also, um, our, our first we initiate our factory. The new duplex channel factory new instance contest so the contest will be the peer, our peer host that we just initiated and then our endpoint So our peer channel will be factory dot create channel. And then the communication. This we initiate instantiate the communication. We cast it to we cast our I communication, cast our peer channel. So we check if our communication is not empty, still not empty, it's not supposed to be, but obviously, if it's not empty, then what we do is we trigger an event. So we come to that. So inside the event, we set our if service started to true. So after that, we just try to see if we can effectively open our communication channel. So we just test if everything is working nice so 
So you your turn. So we, what we do is we well, we cut pier to pier exception. We're not going to write anything to the console. What we do is just we throw a new pier to pier exception. Error establishing here error services, whatever it is. We just choose an error. So for here now, seems like we are up and running. So what we do now, I mean, this uh, and actually we have written the start code into the stop code so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy the start method into the stop method and then we change the start to stop here so the stop method is is, is very simple what we do is um, we check if the communication is not empty. Now we, we close it. Close the channel as well. So in this case, I mean, we just we just know that we successfully closed it. I mean, if force is returned, then it's already closed anyway. So. Uh, this is all that we have so next video we'll move on to the test console.test to run some tests and put it, put in some values and see what we're gonna get in return okay for now bye bye